everybody. I'm in Kona uh, on the Big Island of Hawaii and behind me are some coffee plants with some ripe coffee cherries and I'm going to try to make my a cup of my own coffee where I pick the beans myself and go through the process. So stay with me. So over here you can see there is a little of coffee. what it looks like. If you didn't know, that's Kona coffee. That's the good stuff. And I think the ripe ones are like, kind of like this. They're a little bit soft. That's what I'm kind of looking for. Here are my coffee cherries I'm going to start with. I'm just going to start with this much. This is the easiest way to separate the fruit from the bean. Just stick it in your mouth. Right down on it. There you go. Here's what they look like. See that? Okay. Mama bean and papa bean. The next step is to let the beans soak in water for two days and what will happen is they'll ferment, the out, outside will ferment beans, but you'll notice that some float and others are on the bottom, but they say you should get rid of the floating beans, they're bad, so that's what I'm doing. It's not going to leave me with a lot of coffee, but here you see I got my, these beans and they, they're all floating. Okay, so I was fermenting the beans in water for a day, and then all I did was rinse them to get the outer coating off. Now I'm going to take a little while and dry them out. I'm going to start with a fan here. Dry them out. Well, all right. Good morning, campers. The beans have dried out, so we are going to continue the process by husking the outer core of the uh, bean, and then you just get the inner, inner core, and then on to the next step. Here's my ones that I didn't use, but I might just make up a, cough, a cup out of those. For all my back-breaking labor and tedium, this is what I got. But I'll tell you what, they really do smell amazing. It's so earthy. <clears throat> I can see why coffee is good for you just by smelling that. Mm. Delicious. I cannot wait to roast these up and drink them. Okay, it's day five of our little Kona coffee experiment here on the Culinary Edge TV. It's time to roast the beans and uh, grind it up and drink it up. We needed the oven to 275. Best thing to do when you're doing this real primitive style of roasting is just open up the oven, shake them around. Don't burn them. I'm still going to conduct my little experiment where I roasted. I'm roasting the perfect ones right now, nearly perfect, and then I'm going to roast these guys, as you can see, are not perfect. Taste the difference. I upped my temperature to 300 because it was kind of doing going slow. Get that nice brown color. I can really smell the sweetness in them right now. Mm. Since coffee is mostly water, it's important you use good water when you're making coffee. I mean, as good as you can get. So I'm using Kona water, which I think is beautiful water, through a filter. 
and that's what we're going to use to make our precious cup. Looking and smelling good. This is like a medium roast. I'm going to go a little bit more and then stop. They have like a real caramel, caramel smell. I'm going to place them into my grinder. This grinder here. All 35 beans. So when I smell it, I'm, I'm just really blown away by how, how much it smells like caramel and sweet and not like that deep coffee flavor. Super earthy. It's weird. Hmm. I honestly wanted to make a whole cup of coffee and um, for all those cherries that I picked, I'm lucky if I'm going to get three sips. Alright, I'm going to get my three sips now. I feel like I under-roasted this batch. And it looks more like tea. Coffee tea than it does coffee. <laughs> there it is. Look how light that is. Doesn't really look like coffee. Looks like coffee they would drink in the Midwest. All right, here we go. Mm, it's delicious. It's delicious. But it doesn't taste like coffee. It tastes like tea. <laughs> I'm sure those, co those, those are coffee trees over there. Man, I really, I actually, I think I under roasted the beans. That's why. It's very light. It has a great flavor, earthy and sweet, um, lots of caramel, but I needed more coffee and I needed to do a heavier roast. I just didn't want to over roast it. It's still delicious though. Mm. When you go through the process of making anything, you learn one, a new appreciation for the people that do it well, and two, um, you know how important each step is to get it right. I roasted up the second batch, um, the ones that are were like less than perfect, and it doesn't really. I don't think it mattered that they had blemishes, but I did roast it a lot longer, and it smells a lot more like coffee than my last batch. Hmm. Let me see. There's the second batch. Um, I roasted the bean much longer this time. And mm, looks like the color of coffee, and not tea. <laughs> There's the swimming with bow-legged women. <clears throat> Still tastes like tea. <laughs> it's got a little more. Mmm, it's really good though. It's just very mild coffee taste. Oh yeah, that's good. Mm, I'm tasting it now. Got the smokiness that time. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Well, there you have it. I made uh, coffee myself. I think I would do a few things different, um, but like do more next time. Thanks for watching the Culinary Edge TV. See you next time, buddy.